Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. This is Yadin here, Yadin Ben Chayel, a.k.a. Ras Ayadonis Tafari, L-O-J, L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. Also, Ras Tafari, Israelites on the YouTube for the evening podcast, the stream. But here, we're going to touch on Seth. Is Seth Satan or Satan? Right? Let's go way back, way back, right, to that wisdom of Moshe. Right? As Acts of the Apostles says that Moses was learned right, in the wisdom of the Gipsoch. Well, that's from the royal and heart right there above the Egypts. And he was mighty in what? Word and deed. So what about this Satan and Seth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seth and Satan. And the red here. Seth and the red here. I think I need to start out with this one right here. Right? Seth. Satan was Malcolm X was Malcolm X a type of Seth right it's concerning this whole red here right now Seth right here let's just zoom in right here Seth or some say suit like suit remember Bobby Hemet you know we'll go into that Macyan view of like suit typhoon right like suit typhoon right but suit or suit tech right we have suit tech if you start to really get into those sort of studies in detail. But we're going to keep it kind of basic right here. Now, Seth, we have this, the brothers. We have this duality here. We have like Horus, and we're talking about like Horus the Elder. So we're going to the most ancient narrative. Not the later day, you know, that later day Egyptian thing. You know, Egypt is a lot like um, the denominations of Christianity and the Catholicism in a very interesting way. We need to pick up on that. And bring forth some of the exhibits, right? But this is on Seth, my right? Satan, Seth, and the red here. But was Malcolm X a type of Seth? Was he a type of Seth? Suit and see, when we start to now take the knowledge that we've been learning, right, in the ancient mythos, right? Remember, we just did a vid on mythos. Check out that one on mythos. It's a kind of academic one because what we need to do is to break down these words. A lot of these foolish debates and arguments is because we're misusing or misunderstanding words. You know, like we're looking at a 1611 Bible and we're reading it with our understanding of words today. And it's been proven that even language that we use today, right, in 2022, if we go back like 40 years, there's a, a difference, you know, from the previous generation. I mean, ones and ones who have youths and your yeah, youths, how they speak, their slang is different. Right. You know, and then you'd be saying something like, oh, that's old, such and such. Right. Now, imagine the written word as well. So that other video on mythos. Right. We looked at the duality. Maybe we got to rename that one like the duality. <laughs> the duality of the mythos. That might be a better upgrade name. I'm going to think about that. I'm going to see how ones and ones pick up on that. But that's an academic video. This is a little bit of an academic video, but maybe we have to kind of turn up on the title because this we want to connect Malcolm X, you know, Detroit Red, right? And it was called Detroit Red for a reason. Now, let's put this in context here. Let's pull out of this for a moment, right? And let's go into our screenshots. Right, we have some screenshots right here. Right, let's go into some screenshots right here. And let's go to the screenshot on we're looking for the one where they was talking about Seth. Right? Seth. We looked up Seth and Red here. We could actually probably pull it up on the um pull it up on the on the on the phone right here and you can see it for yourself. So there's some screenshots here, some research. Right, and this is a research video, but we've proven certain things by the research we want to share right most of us don't really know these things even when we talk about like say malcolm x okay which one is this right here it was talking about seth and the red here right okay let's just do this right here and show show it to you like this let's go over here right bring that up bring up the chrome right and let's just put seth Right, it remembers the search right there, and let's click it right there. Boom. Okay, you see it right here. Seth and the red here. Right, that's the search. Right, and now the page that comes up is this ancient Egypt Online dot co dot uk. Mm -hmm. Let's read this together right here on Seth. Right, so is Seth right or is Satan Seth? Seth Satan. Many say, and we see within. You know, the linguistics of it, also in the mythos, 
right? There is a very, also we, we can look at just the basic letters, you know, Satan, Sat, and, right? Satan. Now, Satan's an interesting terminology if we go to the Hebrew, right? But here, we're going to keep it basic. Seth in the red here. Seth, right? Satan. You know, Malcolm X was Malcolm X a type of set. Was he type of set? Now here it says that set was thought to have white skin. Now this is this right here is the um the the propaganda, so to speak. This right here is like the um how can we say the disinformation, right? So on this site we found information and disinformation. Let's go right here as we scroll to the site Ancient Egypt Online, and this is the exact part. Now read this right here. Let's read this together. It says Seth was thought to have white skin. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. Thought. He was thought. You know what I mean? Taught to who? No, he was thought. To, thought by who to have white skin. Now, in our research, and we actually went to like the Google and, you know, some of the older books, you know, going from the older books to even some of the books that, you know, the updated books with some of the latest research and everything, you know, where they might have discovered something. But see, if they had anything, they would say, well, Seth had white skin and they'll point to it. But here they say, they give it away. They say it was thought. Right? So it's all about the thought. Remind me what Robenu says. He says, think not that I have come to bring peace to the earth. You know, shalom to the earth, but a sword. Right? And we're going to cut this right here. Seth was thought to have white skin. Thought by who to have white skin? <laughs> and red hair. But the facts of the matter is, right, from we could go back to the, the earliest of the, the so-called credible, for the time period, of course, Egyptian research, right, to even some of the later scholars, right, that have gone over some of their works and kind of verified it or even upgraded some of the earlier scholarship in Egyptology and also, you know, the comedics, you know, the black people, right, because we want to big up the black people who are doing real research into comedics because there is a whole battle. The battle lines are drawn. Two places battle lines are drawn is around Israel and the Bible. And it's also around ancient Egypt, right? Ancient Egypt. There's some strong battle lines. I don't know if you all are peeping it, right, on social media. You know, it depends on what you research, what you go check out, right? But it's brewing. It's brewing, right? And we already know that, um, I think it was before, was it before, after Rushido, um, the brother passed away in Egypt, they were supposed to have a conference over there, right? And how the so-called um, modern Egyptians, like the modern Egyptians are trying to call, you know, the pro so-called black, you know, comedic or those who see comedic, you know, ancient Egypt as having a link, not, even, not, not a link, you know, have a, having its origin in black Africa. They're trying to say that ancient Egyptians wasn't black, right? And then they play this Nubian thing almost. And that shows that they're, they're biased, you know, like what they did in, 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 in slavery, slavery days in America. You know, remember they used to have a lot of these um, um, stereotypes. You know, these stereotypes, the little like dolls and other things where they had like these stereotypical, even the cartoons, you know, these stereotypical, you know, um, kind of blackface, what they would call like the blackface characters. And they do the same thing with Egyptology, right? But here is a prime example concerning Seth. Now, I know there's others out there who do their research, so if you come across that Seth was thought to have white skin, because when I saw this here, I said, what? Seth had white skin. You know, I know you had red hair. That's what we've started to, to say, you know, Seth and the red hair. We want to go find, you know, some of the, the points of evidence, right, to present, and then to connect it with Malcolm X, the red hair, because we don't really, most ones don't even remember how red Malcolm X was. Right, and then in ancient Egypt, it was said, and also other countries. We have this in the Bible. David, they, King David, was said to be red and ruddy. Now, some people would tell you that it's red and ruddy is white. This has been a big argument, and still certain ones who are still holding on to the lies that they have inherited from in white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity. They're still trying to hold on to that fact that when it talks about being ruddy, right? Somehow, ruddy is like a white person blushes. So a white person who might be pale, they happen to blush, and now when they blush, they might be a little red in the cheeks, and that's what they consider ruddy, and they use what they think, like they say Seth was thought, so they use their thought, right, to then superimpose this thought 
right, onto that misinterpretation of the Bible and say, well, Adam was a white man because when it's about Ruddy and David was white man because it's about Ruddy and they make you believe that Ruddy or Red means that someone is white. But then we begin to open our eyes and see. It's like our eyes have been wide shut, right, to the fact that this ruddiness, right, is also a characteristic amongst mel melanated people, right? Even the whole white skin, we could go into the whole albino reasoning because there's still ones who are saying, well, well, Noah was an albino as though black people, right, don't produce all different shades. In fact, don't they say according to DNA and science, modern science and the evidence, you know, that it appears that all... You know, humans might derive their origin one way or the other, you know, from black people because that black seed, right, has the richest variety, right? So from that black seed, we can get every phenotype. That means all kind of features, whether it is, you know, the round features, whether it's the, the long feature or whether it's a combination of the round you know, and the long features and create the oval features, every sort of complexion, right? Every shade of complexion from blue black, you know what I mean? Like the blue, you know, the ancient gods, they, they show them as blue, <laughs> you know? And see, among black folks, we know that we have ways of communicating where we use this same ancient, we could say mythological on some level, language. This, this metaphorical language. So I just had to bring this to your attention that this is one of the new kind of um, disinfos that's out there where they're going on their thought. Now remember, this site right here, let's go up here. Now this site is a good site to get into some details because it has some credible information on it. There's some information that we can say, yeah, you know, yeah, we read that. Yeah, we know that that is so. You know what I mean? That's a fact right there, right? You know, things that are said can be backed up. But then we notice their language when they say they thought. They could say, well, Seth, you know, was thought to be one of the ancient, right, of the Egyptian gods. And was thought to focus worship since, you know, they could, they could put that thought there, but they don't. Because this is something that can be proven. Like Seth, also known as Seth, or Sutek, or Sut, or Sutek, that's Setek. And some say, well, maybe it might have been because of the lack of vowels. And since most of the Egyptologists are not very strong, right, in the Horn of Africa languages, ancient languages like the, the Omotic, right, or the Akalagutas, right, or the Tigrinya, right, or the Gazinya, the Gutas, right, or the Amorinya, right, or the Oromifa, you know, or the Cushitic, they, 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 because they refuse to see the origins. Right? Where the ancient Egyptians said the, their origins came out of inner, for lack of a better word, but the terminology we use today, inner Africa, inner Tobia, inner Ethiopia. Right? So let's go down here again, because we'd like to go through this in a little more detail, but we're going to keep this to um, Malcolm X. Was Malcolm X, right, with the red hair, a type of Seth, right, with the red hair? Now, is Seth really a type of Satan? And what do we mean, right? When one says Satan, what do you mean by Satan, right? You know, what is meant by Satan? But here, let's just get through this right here. Seth was thought to have white skin and red hair. Thought to have. No, it's known that Seth had red hair, right? It's even written, you know, within the, you know, within the, 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 the Metunet, uh, you know, the Ryan Comet, the language, you know, in the writings. We have this written, right? And it can be referenced in writing. But this idea of, quote, thought. So what they do here is they take something that can be proven to be true, that Seth and the red hair, it can be proven from the evidence to be true. But Seth being thought to have white skin. It's interesting because there is that um, of Seti. Seti. You remember this Seti? Seti was the father of Ramses, right? And Ramses is said to be, you know, one of the greatest from modern Egyptology perspectives of the ancient Egyptian, um, you know, Sutin Biti, right, Suchinet, you know what I mean, you know, one of, the, one of the greatest of the Egyptian pharaohs, right? But it, they even say that he was thought to have red hair. And so there's this argument that goes on, 
right? And it's kind of a post-traumatic racism argument, right? Because there was a lot of lies, right, that were kind of grandfathered, you know, um, in, you know, like a lot of white lies, right, that were grandfathered in. Right? And now that we're like in this friendly PC age, to even address these lies right, becomes problematic. But they have to be addressed. Right? They have to be addressed. Thought to have white skin and red hair. And people with red hair were thought to be his followers. Now that also is proven from the ancient manuscripts, texts, monuments, and writings. He was associated with the desert, which takes its name from the, the Mitzrayim or the ancient Kemetic word, right, um, Dershet, you know, Dersheret, Dershet, Dershet, Dersheret, they argue over what vowels might have been, right? The red place, right? He represented the fierce dry heat of the sun as it parched the land and was infertile like the desert. So now here we have, even from ancient Chem and ancient Egypt, we have a mythos, right? A mythos or a myth, right? Now what we have to determine whether, what is the true narrative, right, from the fable. Now they try to add in that Seth had white skin and this is, this is a little bit fabulistic. But in Seth, Seti's the first tomb, who was the father of Ramses, you know, the Ramses. He, basically, he's the one who started the whole Ramesside thing, right? So we have a Seth. Now notice all Seti the first. And in Seti the first tomb, they were like um, mankind, you know, where they have this like, like, like four different kinds of mankind. Some people look at that to be a kind of an allegory, so to speak, of like the Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And one of them is named the Tamahu. And it said that when Champollion, Champollion finally was able to decipher things and he first read it, he was terribly upset because he was looking, as many of the Europeans were looking in their archaeology for their own origins in ancient cultures because they wanted to know, well, where did they originate from? All the other, other people knew who they were. Right? The ancient Egyptians knew who they were, the ancient Kushites, Ethiopians, the ancient Assyrians, you know, all the ancient people knew who they were. Right? Ancient Indians, ancient Chinese, everybody knew who they were. But it's like the white man did it. So what he did, he ran around digging up people's stuff, right? And then dictating to them, right? As though now he's telling them, oh, you know, your ancient story is not really true, but he don't really have any story. So when Champollion and the rest of them had broke into Seti's, one of the, you know, one of the tombs and everything, and they found this, um, I think it's from the Book of Gates, right? They found this wall painting. And then when they interpreted the Tamahu to something of the effect of made white, because the Tamahu are clearly, right, the ones that resemble even with their tattoo. You know, tattoo is a big thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least in the way the Tamahu do it, right, is very unique, right, to even a lot of day white folks. But when he found that out, he was so upset about it. And they've been trying to cover up that ever since. But it's clear, both from the visual and also from a correct interpretation, that they were, quote, made white or they were so-called white people. Right? Now, there's an argument whether they were really Libyans and so forth and so on. But well, here's what's interesting. Libyan come from Laban, from the Afro-Shemitic, which means white too. So just to put that there on the Bema. But what does this have to do with Seth? Right? So he was thought to have white skin and red hair. But now, let's take a look over here, right? Let's take a look over here. Let's come out of this right here and come back to our exhibits, right? Let's come back to our exhibits. Let's start out right here. This is Malcolm. Wow. This is Malcolm, right? This is Malcolm, right? Now, there's some, I think there's some of these that might be, you know, they did this whole, what they call it? What's that wax museum? I think they have some things in the wax museum. So some of this might be some of these pictures, this one right here, it might be one of them. You know, because they're really clever, right, at make-believe. But they are basically, even if this is a wax one, I think this one might be one of the wax ones. We just went and gathered some of them. This one is actually when he was over there in the east, over there in Mecca, right? So you can see this, he was actually red. Remember my earthly father, you know, had, had, had mentioned something, like in passing, you know, that he was very unique, 
You know, he's a black man. Now, Malcolm X, is he a black man or not a black? Yes, he's a black man. Is he not red? So, therefore, when it speaks about David in the Bible being ruddy and red, you know what I mean? Therefore, when the connection of Adam, right, Adam, even in the Hebrew, right, Aleph, first, ox, dam is blood, and then Aduma is that reddish-brown ground. So this also is another further proof. See, when they now hit you with the stereotypes, when they say black, they mean some, some foolish stereotype right that over exaggerates and seek to denigrate you know a certain type of black physiognomy right you know there's for example when you talk about oh the black people wasn't was the egyptian y'all were the nubians the tanesi the negroes you know the vile negroes and all the vile kushites you know what i mean all this kind of stuff is that what the the the, the Ancient Egyptians use the term Negro? <laughs> I didn't think so. But you can clearly see he's red right here. Right? So what's up with this red? This is also another my picture. You can clearly see right, the redness of him. But he's still a black man. So now think about it. When they're now looking at wall paintings and monuments, and they come across a wall painting or a statue or something like that, right? and some of the red is like, you know, the reddish brown is chipping off. And then they try to say, oh, you black people, you Afro nuts, you know, you so-called comedics, y'all are crazy. We need to start to use proof like this. See, a lot of us are used to the black and white, right? Because there's a lot of black and white of, you know, videos and everything of Malcolm, so forth and so on. But we miss one of the main points of the people in the time recognize this uniqueness of this ruddy reddishness and then as we look into history whether it's the bible with david where it says don't look upon david because he's ruddy right in other words don't like don't don't use that against him because he's 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 unique in this sense you know like almost like oh look look malcolm is red like that so oh he must have white blood or something you know all these kind of speculation but this goes way back so even before the European or the so-called white man even became the latter-day white man, we had this variety, right? We had this variety, you know what I mean? This is another picture, actual picture, where you can actually even much clearer see, right? So this is the beauty of melanin. <laughs> we can talk about the beauty of melanin, right? But we'd like to get into the mythos, the mythology of Seth, and the red here because some say that Seth is Satan now Satan if we take it out of spookism Satan basically means adversary or as people will say today right as supposed to use the ops right the ops so in other words if you're trying to get out of this room right and I'm standing in the doorway Technically, I'm your Satan. No horns on my head. No, no red, this red, no spook out. I'm just, I'm blocking your way. You, you know what I'm saying? So, to get to the root idea of what it means, right? The root idea, but here's another picture of the red, right? Here's another picture of the red. Like we said, this is a brief video right here, part of a, you know, part of a research, right? Here we can see it right here too as well. Right. See, the people in the time, I think many of us, this might be shocking to ones. I don't know if it is, if, if you've seen these red pictures, right? when I say red pictures, this is how he actually looked. But you remember back in those days, there was a lot much more black and white than color. But the people who actually lived in that time, they recognized it. So a lot of us who kind of maybe grew up or got familiar with those days, we're looking at a lot of old black and white you know videos so we might see him in the video being somewhat maybe seemingly lighter in complexion than certain you know black complexion you know men and women but not even just lighter it's the red because there's some people some black people who are lighter skin but we may not have that red you know you know there's different they can have more more golden you know more olive you know when people say oh jesus wasn't black he was olive skin are you foolish or just ignorant? Olives come in two varieties. Do you know that, right? Black and green. <laughs> Olives come in two main varieties. Black and green. See, most of us don't even know there's black olives. Think about it for a moment. 
right? At least back in the days, maybe now with social media and the World Wide Web and, you know, you can research things and look at all the pictures. And But when you went in the store before, especially in black neighborhood, the only kind of olives you would get is green olives and then they'll have that little bit of red something, that pepper or whatever in it. You know what I mean? So then when they said, oh, Jesus, he, he, he wasn't black. He was, he was Middle Eastern, like olive complexion. Mm. But see, what they didn't tell us is that there's black olives. All right. When I got to discover there's black olives, and, and that's what people really, the real people who know olives, they want to get that black olive. Sweet of the berry, the sweet of the juice. So if the Israelites right, were olive complexion, by and large, and there's two kinds of olives. Let me ask you, have you seen somebody with green skin? I'm not talking about the wall paintings in the ancient comedic myth mythos, mythology. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, and when I say mythology, I'm not using it in a derisive sense. You got to check out our video. You know, the duat, well, we might update the title, but why, you know, the Bible is a myth to the many. Why the Bible is a myth to the many. I think people are avoiding it because it's going to expose something. They're going to have to relook at how they look at things. Right, so here, just a little bit on Malcolm right here, just to sh see some pictures right here, you know, how he actually looked. Now, if we had the ability to like take the color off, that's how people would be seeing it, right? But this is how he actually was seen, you know, in the time that he was seen. Now, some of y'all probably have seen this one right here, you know, but he was known as Old Detroit Red. And some of y'all might recall that, you know, Old Detroit Red. This is an artist. This is an artist who painted this particular picture. Sorry, brother or sister. I would like to give due a credit. Let's, let's see down here. Let's see. Maybe you can see the name right here. We want to big up the artist then. Right? But you'll see this work right here. You know, big up the artist. If we get the name and we do a next video, we'll definitely heal up the artist. Because this brings out the point that we're making. Right? You see how there's an emphasis right, on that ruddiness. So we can truly say... My Malcolm X, red or ruddy, he becomes a prime example, especially in these pseudo-biblical arguments that try to say, well, Adam couldn't be black because of the ruddy and the red connection. Right? When we actually look at the ground that's reddish-brown, you know what that comes to? Kemet. That, that, that Kemet, the, what's called Kemet, that black ground, is actually very dark reddish brown it's actually very dark red but it's so rich in this reddish brown that that reddish brown basically appears black so therefore we get the cam the camet right and here's another picture from a still from a video right i mean this you know as they say this boy is red this boy is really red right now i want to make the suit or the suit tech or the seth connection right because of the events that occurred later on right like like we have malcolm when he's in favor now if you know anything about the ancient suit and seth from ancient egypt ancient kemet mitzrayim you know that in the earlier legends right in the earlier narratives he was almost like a good guy you know what I'm saying? He was a good guy at first. We see him on the bark, on, on, on the ship of Ra. In fact, let's just show this right here. Just, just ones can investigate a little bit more in, their, in your own research. But so you can just see what, see what we see right here. Right? So you see Seth? This is, this is Seth in the front of the boat of Ra. Right? And then we see some correspondences right, in the ancient Egyptian mythos. I, you know, the, the, the mythology or the mysteries, the myster, right? You have to be initiated to really understand. Otherwise, it might seem like silliness. But if you're initiated and you understand what was being said, right, and really being communicated, you know, the principles over personality, we can apply these same principles and personality with Malcolm X, my right? Detroit Red, my right? <laughs> you know, like with Seth, right, when he was in favor. Okay, here you see Seth. Right at on the bark of Ra, right, holding back the Apophis, the Apepa. So now you could say a Apepa, a Apepa appears a little white there himself. Look at the body right there. Okay, so a Apepa, right, that old dragon. Then you can fade over into like the New Testament, the Chazon Yohanan. We're talking about the serpent, right? And even in Revelation, talk about that old serpent, 
right? And when it says that old serpent that go back to the to, to the Kedem, right, to the first time, to the Zetpetepi, right? So here it says right here, it says Seth at one time was the protector. Remember how Malcolm X one time was like the protector? Think about it. He was the protector. Remember Ra and Ray? According to the legend, he was getting old, remember? He had ruled for a long time. One of the one of the early gods, Ra and Ray. Is this could this be a likeness to Elijah? So in here he's in favor. Right? So he goes from being a good god, or so to speak. It's a despite the role he was given, right? Despite the role he was given in the death of Osiris or Osar, Seth was considered to be the defender of the sun god Ra or Re. He protected the solar bark on its journey through the underworld, right? The underworld, this wilderness of North America, this underworld, or the night sky. Remember, the Egyptians looked at the West to be the land of death. So where are we? My in this western remember how Elijah Muhammad said Greet to my people here in the western hemisphere of these United States of America right so the ancient Egyptian look at the west to be the land of the death right where, where the sun in the other words went down to die right uh, parabolically and he fought the serpent of Pep yet even when he was acting to protect Ray the negative side over this of his personality was apparent see i know a lot of ones are kind of infatuated since um um spike lee did that movie the malcolm x movie back in the day that changed everything right there was one understanding of the early days from like the elders and those who experienced it but after that movie came out that spike lee movie this is what kind of change this is what in a sense put into ancient Egyptian this is where like Malcolm X almost like became a god or deified right before that he was more in the character that we're bringing out here according to ancient Egyptian mythos of Seth of the red hair old Detroit red right so it says yet even while he was acting to protect Ra or Ray right the negative side of his personality was apparent we can apply this to Detroit Red, Malcolm X, according to the principles here, which actually proves the principles of the true mythos. He often boasted that he was the only right, one of the gods brave enough to stand against a pep. Don't we see that as well? You, you remember, remember the scene where there was a big riot somewhere up in Harlem or somewhere, and there was a whole bunch of black men, and they were out there, Nation of Islam, FOI, and Malcolm had just like moved his hand. He gestured or something because it was getting wild. The cops were on one side. They were scared, but they had their numbers. They were ready, you know, to do violence. But the Nation of Islam, the FOI was there, you know, so it was a, it was a real standoff. And then Malcolm came out, you know, and he spoke and he gestured. It's like in the New Testament, about Paul had gestured when he came to speak to the people. He made some sort of gesture. And when the white sergeant or whatnot saw this, he said, and it's on one of those videos, it's been recorded historically, he said, this is like one of the most dangerous men, I don't know if he said in America or the world, but he saw that danger right there. You know what I'm saying? So this is where we go into this part where he was one of the gods you know, and then we have the gods, you know, with with the father, Allah, Clarence, 13X, you know what I'm saying? Brave enough to stand against a pep. So a pep for us, of course, you know who you know who a pep is, you know what I mean? For us, poor righteous teachers, you, you always know who a pep would be. And demanded that he be treated with great respect. <laughs> he even threatened Ray. Does it is this sounding familiar? Right? Is Satan Seth, right? It was Malcolm X, Detroit Red with the red hair, a type of Seth, right? Or Satan, right? According to the mythos, because it says right here, he even threatened Ray or Ra that if he was not treated well enough, he would bring storms against him. We don't remember the storms that rose up? After every minister in the nation of Islam was told to stand down, don't say nothing about the assassination of President Kennedy. All of them was told. It wasn't just him. All of them was told. He got those cameras in his face. 
right? Because the media treated him with that respect and he just couldn't, you have to remember who he was before he was Nation of Islam. We have to understand his nature. That's why I went to the negative side of his personality, right? Was apparent. Need we say it? Pimp, pimp, right? Ra eventually, right, tired of his taunting and expelled Seth. Uh-oh, he expelled who? Right? Elijah Muhammad expelled Malcolm X, Detroit Red. <laughs> Ray eventually tired of Seth's taunting and expelled Seth, Sutan, Sutek, from his bark, from the nation of Islam. Because when, when he was together the 90 days, during that 90 days, he kept talking. Right? And in the context, that comes out very much like what we have in this ancient mythos relying on the help of other gods to complete his nightly journey this is where we get other ones in the nation of islam like farrakhan and other ones now start to come forward you know you know then and even after everything because remember the nation of islam basic for all intents and purposes right after the after the storms that malcolm brought it was over right what what farrakhan did in a sense, was on a, on a level revive it, but the actual nation of Islam, it's almost like the whole Osiris thing, right? It basically died on a certain level and was resurrected. More on this as we go forward, brothers and sisters, just laying down a few things right here. Yeah, I think this right here, this is like some wax statue, but you can see what they are emphasizing, right? It's like they make him a little bit lighter right here, but anyway, assassination of Malcolm X, Right. This also is a very good picture. Kind of brings out, you know, it brings out, it brings it out. You know, Detroit Red. Right. So, isn't it interesting? We have a man that's red. Right. He's known as Detroit Red. He was a member of the Nation of Islam. Right. The leader of that. We can liken according to the mythos to Ra or to Ray. Right. The role of Malcolm X as that spokesman. Remember, he was that spokesman. Right, he was that spokesman. <laughs> you know, I hope they find that missing chapter of Malcolm X's book because it totally ignores when he went to the OAU and the proceedings. You know, we've spoken to those, some of them have passed away, but they gave testimony, you know, of what had occurred when Malcolm X had actually went and reached, you know, Ethiopia and the OAU. This is where the OAAU came from. And even there, they warned him right to build the organization with the african leaders build a part of the bridge over there but you know he was you know seth is seth right detroit red you know malcolm x right detroit red you know yes yeah. so here as we began off with seth was represented by a big eared imaginary animal with red hair with what red hair resembling a donkey or maybe an aardvark right now the, the animal hasn't been identified as some sort of composite creature so forth and so on but it says he was lord of lower egypt seth was married to his sister neptis or nephet right seth was exiled remember the exile to the desert when malcolm x was like exiled and kind of pushed out the nation what did he do he went where where did malcolm go he went to Arabia. Arabia is where? The desert. Seth was exiled to the desert for all time after killing his brother Osiris. Now, we're not accusing Malcolm of that aspect, but I'm sure if we look into the mythos, we might find a correspondence. Right? Now, according to this, Seth ne never had any children. Now, we know Malcolm had physical children. Right? But then think about how... As powerful as he was on the bark of Elijah Muhammad, that it was almost nearly impossible once he was off the bark. In a sense, he didn't have children in the other sense, right? Children in the sense that Malcolm X was a child or a son of Elijah Muhammad. You get that right there? You know, in that sense. While he probably he had his own children too, but you understand in the sense of like a disciple. Why? He really didn't have those disciples. That was one of the worst things to see. How influential he was when he was on the bark of Elijah Muhammad. And then after he got demoted and exiled right, from that, right, how it was like 
his shine was gone. It was almost like even when he was out there before the assassination, it was like he was in a desert, you know. So the Seth Malcolm X connection, a little bit more on this as we move forward. Here, here, here. Malcolm X and Seth. Take a set.